Hi everyone, look! New background! New filming setup, yay! Well, this is my first video with the new bookshelves. How do they look? I'm really liking it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. This video is going to be a book haul with a twist. I'd like to take the opportunity to talk about the small local bookstore um, called Black Garnet Books. It's kind of a, a little bit of a small business shout out. Um, since the bookstore was founded in the summer of 2020, I have decided to primarily make all of my book purchases through that shop if possible. Um, just because I have the means to do so and that's something that I think is really important to shop local, to shop black owned, to shop woman owned or non-binary owned bookstores in my community. So since they, I have the ability to, um, I'm going to be talking about this bookstore and doing a little bit of a book haul and showing you what I bought from them. All of the sources that I have used to research about this bookstore will be in the comment section down below. So this bookstore is called Black Garnet Books and Black Garnet is a type of stone and it has a very powerful representation. It's uh, known for its strength and self-empowerment. Um, and the founder of the bookstore really wanted to embody that, that strength and self-empowerment in her own business. Uh, Black Garnet is a small, teeny tiny, black woman-owned bookstore in the Twin Cities in Minnesota, where I'm from. The shelves are primarily stocked with young adult and adult contemporary books written by black and racially diverse authors. The slogan for the shop is to diversify your shelves. And that's a, a motto that I would like to um, embody and, and work on going forward. Um, in my reading, I'm trying to be more diverse and I would like my bookshelves to reflect um, that diversity in my personal reading. So I'm gonna actually gonna take, I'm gonna actually quote the Black Garnet's website for this. It says, Black Garnet Books was imagined during the summer of 2020 in response to state violence, as well as the purposeful and unconscious exclusion of black people from the literature community. This bookstore is committed to radicalizing your bookshelves by only stocking books by underrepresented voices at fair prices that honor the craft and energy required to create a great book. This bookstore is committed to showing love for community through mutual aid, engagement, fair wages, and employment practices that disengage from the capitalist scarcity mindset. So when I found out about this bookstore, I really thought that these were values that I wanted to support. This was a business that I really wanted to support and help this woman um, get this business off the ground. And so it originally started as, as nothing, <laughs> obviously. It was originally just to go fund me and a pipe dream, but as of right now, it has a very successful online presence as well as the occasional pop-up store. So the pop-up store is actually located in a tattoo studio in Minneapolis, which I think is fantastic. It's like uh, bringing two of my loves together, uh, which is a lot of fun. The bookstore, over the holidays, the bookstore was actually having problems. Like there were so many orders coming in during the holidays that, um, <laughs> poor Dion, who was the only one working for the store at the time, was super overwhelmed. And I follow her on Twitter and Instagram, and she was posting about, you know, I I love your I love the support, but keep in mind I'm a, I'm just a one woman show, so if your order is late, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I think that um, speaks volumes to that this book this type of bookstore was needed in Minneapolis, and um, this is the only black owned woman owned bookstore in Minnesota and I'm glad that this bookstore could fill that need. So the founder of the bookstore, like I said previously, her name is Dion Sims. She is a queer Minnesota designer. She used to work in the software industry as a user experience designer and I think this is a funny quote from her. She says, if you told me two years ago I'd happily leave a six-figure job to open a bookstore, I would have laughed in your face. And of course, I will leave all of 
Dion's socials in the description below, as well as um, links to the website and the website's um, social media presences as well. So there are so many ways you can support this specific bookstore. Um, and I'm going to be going through how you can support the bookstore. So first of all, you can actually go and shop the pop-up. So the pop-up is, like I said, in a tattoo studio, but it's, it's during COVID times, they actually have appointments scheduled. So you can schedule a time to go and go into the, the store, <laughs> go into the tattoo studio, and there'll be some shelves with with the books available. And so they're doing it very safely. Um, you actually have to schedule time to go into the pop-up. If you don't wanna go into the pop-up store, there's also the online store where you can directly purchase books through the shop. Gift cards are also available through the website. So that is another great way to support them. They are also affiliated with Bookshop. And so Bookshop is a, a, like a really big online um, books, book retailer, but a portion of the sale price for each book that you buy goes to the local bookstore of your choice. So if the the website or the pop-up store doesn't have all of the books that you're looking for, you can go to Bookshop and they have a much larger selection of books, but not as much of the profits will go towards the local bookshop, if that makes sense. It's still, it's still a way to support them though and to do it in a wide a variety of ways. Um, I'm also, I also use an audiobook service called Libro FM and Libro FM, it's, it's very similar to Bookshop where a percentage of the audiobook sale goes directly to the local bookstore. So when I buy audiobooks, I am also supporting Black Garnet books. And if you don't want to support them financially, I do recommend following them on all their social medias. Um, they have both Dion and the store have Instagram and Twitter accounts. So if you'd like to follow the, the store, they're at Black Garnet Books um, and Twitter and all of that. And again, I will leave all of that information in the description. So I'd like to just pause for one moment and do a little disclaimer. So while I am personally choosing to support Black Garnet Books and Dion, the, the founder, I want to remind everyone to not put any one person or business on a pedestal. It's not Dion's job to inform me or educate me on political or social topics. She's just Someone I think is really cool and worth supporting on Twitter and Instagram. So she's not a monolith. She's just one person who owns a bookstore. And yes, she might tweet or post like political or social commentary things because she is a part of society. She's reacting to society as we live in it. Um, but she's only one person and it's not her job to give me information um, or educate me in any way. Buying books from a local bookstore is just one small way to make a difference and support black people in my community. So that's just what this video is about. It's just highlighting this one awesome local bookstore, but this isn't the end all be all. And so I just wanted to throw that in here. That's my little disclaimer. But now let's talk about the books that I bought from Black Garnet. So the first set of books I'm going to talk about are the Lady Astronauts series, which includes The Calculating Stars, The Faded Sky, of which I am almost done with, and The Relentless. Um, if you, any of you know Starla <laughs> uh, over at Starla Reads, I'll have her channel linked below. She is the reason I bought these books. So I have a rule for myself where I typically don't buy books unless I've already read them from the library. Um, and that's just kind of a general rule. I don't always stick to it, but um, I made an exception um, for this trilogy because I knew I would love it. Um, so the summary of this series is, it's set in an alternate history in the 1950s where a meteor has struck the Chesapeake Bay and wiped out 
a good chunk of the United States. Um, and so the first book is about a young, a young woman named Elma York, and she is a pilot and a physicist, mathematician, um, and she is um, fighting to uh, join the astronaut program because with the meteor striking the Earth, um, it's basically going to cause the Earth to become uninhabitable. And so the space program is um, trying to get colonies uh, put on the moon and Mars. Um, but this is the 50s and they haven't, we haven't landed on the moon yet. So this is like an alternate history with that. And so we're following Elma York as she is fighting against basically the misogyny of the time period to get lady astronauts into space and be part of the space program. And let me tell you, I already read book one and I'm almost done with book two and this is a fantastic series. I, I gambled um, and won <laughs> with this series. This is so much more than what my description is. This has to do with feminism and racism and El Elma is a white feminist at first. You know, she doesn't really see the plight of black women as any different from her experience as a white Jewish woman. She she has to have her eyes opened up to the experience of black people, of Asian people. Um, and so this handles a lot of really serious topics. Elma also suffers from anxiety and during a time when anxiety was even more stigmatized than it is today, I mean, it's still stigmatized, but even more so in the time period in which this novel is set. So we're dealing with mental health and issues and racism and feminism in set in like this alternate history and this sci-fi world. And it's incredible. I, tr I flew through book one and I'm almost done with book two. So that is the Lady Astronaut series. And just so you know, there is a Lady Astronaut book four coming. It's scheduled for 2022. Um, so a little ways out, but I'm really excited. I'm loving this series. And I um, thank you to Starla from Starla Reads for recommending it to me because it is definitely a new favorite series. You were totally right. The other books I wanted to talk about are right here and I haven't even opened one yet because I wanted to wait and film with you guys. They are Kristen Kishore's Graceling Realm series with the new covers. So we have Graceling, Fire, and Bitter Blue. And guess what's in the box. Book four! Yee! Book four just came out and that is nine years after book three came out. So I am incredibly excited. So for comparison's sake, these are the old covers for Graceling. This uh, Graceling came out in 2008 and I think this cover really represents um, the aesthetic of that time and but this just doesn't even compare. Look at how gorgeous it is. So I definitely treated myself because I already have copies of Graceling Fire and Blader Blue, but I just couldn't say no to these beautiful editions. So a little summary. Um, I've talked about these in my Comfort Reads video, so I'll have that linked above, but Gracelings are individuals in this continent that have two different colored eyes and enhanced abilities. And in Graceling, we're following Katza, who can kill people really well, <laughs> basically. But let's look at the new the new shiny book. I don't know. I'll try to cover up address. I have a hard time opening these, so we'll we'll see we'll see how it goes. Oh no! Oh. Oh, what a tease. It's the back cover. Ready? One, two, three. Winter Keep by Kristen Kishore, which just 
released on January 19th, which was just a couple days ago when I'm filming this video. And just look at how beautiful the, the covers look when they're going together. Just absolutely stunning. I just had to get the matching covers. And so uh, without spoiling anything, I'm gonna give you a little summary of what Winter Keep is about. And so this is from Goodreads. I'm just gonna read you a little bit of a summary. Four years after Bitter Blue left off, a new land has been discovered to the east, Torla. And then the closest nation to Monsia is Winterkeep. Winterkeep is a land of miracles, a democratic republic run by people who like each other, where people speak to telepathic sea creatures, adopt telepathic foxes as pets, and fly across the sky in ships attached to balloons. Which, I mean, I'm already sold because I'm a huge fan of this series, but that just sounds fantastic. And so I think what this is about is basically Bitter Blue from the book Bitter Blue is going to be traveling to Winter Keep, and there we meet a new character. I don't want to know too much more about it going into it. Here it is, Winter Keep in hardcover. I am incredibly excited and I can't wait to binge read it. I might actually take a pause on the Lady Astronauts and read this because this is one of my most anticipated books of the year. Anyway, to wrap up this video, I'd like to say thank you for watching. And I encourage you, if um, if you can, to research and find fall, small bookstores in your area. And I think it's important to support small local stores um, if, if we can. If you have the ability to, I highly re recommend it. I feel like I'm making a little bit of a difference just by buying my books through uh, a small bookstore instead of a big chain. Um, but like I said, if you're able to, I highly encourage you to. If you made it to the end of this video, maybe put a black heart in the comments section and considering checking out the links to Black Garnet Books. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!